Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. From Hollywood, here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, your railroads, through the Association of American Railroads, present The Vagabond King. In our star-studded cast, you will hear the host of our series, Gordon McRae, and three distinguished guest stars, Dorothy Kirsten, Lucille Norman, and Francis X. Bushman, with a great cast of Hollywood featured players, including Lou Merrill, John McIntyre, and William Demling. And this is your announcer, Marvin Miller. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the entire production is set to the music of Carmen Dragon's orchestra and brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae helping to bring you another in our series of musical successes. Tonight, the Railroad Hour show train presents one of the greatest musicals of all time, a show that originally ran for over 500 performances at the Casino Theater on Broadway, one of the longest runs for any musical in theatrical history. Tonight, singing the music of Rudolph Frimmel, you will hear the brilliant voice of Dorothy Kirsten of the Metropolitan and San Francisco Opera and the exciting new radio discovery, Lucille Norman. As that intriguing scoundrel, Louis of France, you will hear one of Hollywood's most distinguished stars, Mr. Francis X. Bushman. And it is my particular pleasure to appear as that rogue of early Paris, Francois Villon, the Vagabond King. <laughs> Travel of Paris, I salute you! Hey! Who, my ragged lambs, is the cleverest thief among you? <laughs> who, my plundering pigeons, is the finest poet in Paris? <laughs> and who, my raucous royalty, is the greatest lover in all of France? <laughs> Are we, my arrogant jailbirds, to stand silent and let the Duke of Burgundy conquer us? No! no, no, no. Oh, you beggars of Paris town, you lousy rabble of low degree. You rabble of low degree. We'll swear. King Louis to keep his crown and save our city from Burgundy. Our city from Burgundy. You and I are good for nothing but to die. We can die for liberty. Sons of toil and danger, will you serve a stranger and bow down to Burgundy? Sons of shame and sorrow, will you cheer tomorrow for the crown of Burgundy? Onward, onward, swords against the foe, forward, forward, the lily banners go. Sons of France around us, break the chain that bound us down, down, down with Burgundy. Sons of toil and danger, will you serve a stranger and bow down to Burgundy? tonight. You, over there to my right, what is your profession? Pickpockets. Welcome, pickpockets. And you down there in the center, how about you? We are plunderers. Welcome. And you? Thieves, Francois. The slyest, cleverest thieves in all of France. Welcome, welcome, my slum angels, my dungeon doves. I invite you to be my guests. Will you dine with me? We will. We will. Tonight, we feast on lashings of rare abbey wine, roast goose and tarts, larded capons and crackling pig. And with the banquet, I give you the splendid thought that all this that I provided cost not one sou. Oh. I borrowed it, 
stole it, my ugly friends, from that beautiful philanthropist, that robber of children and graveyards, Louis the King of France. Oh, oh, well, I must leave you for a few minutes, but I shall join you presently. So come now, eat, drink, enjoy yourself. Look for the danger, will you serve a stranger? And bow down to Burgundy. Well, where are you going? Ah, uh, Tabari, how can you ask? Oh, there? Oh, Francois, not again. What is the good of going down night after night to watch a high-born lady leave the cathedral? Because she's a woman. Ah, uh, such a woman. Because she lives and walks and breathes. Oh, that, of course, makes her very unusual. Because when she walks down a street, all the beauty of the world walks with her. Because when she sings... Any man who listens must burn with desire to be the answer to her song. Look, here she comes, Tabari. Oh, listen. Well, now you've done it. Tabari, follow her carriage and leave this envelope on her doorstep. I'll wait for you at the tavern. But what is it? It's a poem, you fool, a poem. The love song of a thief. Oh, follow her, you lucky Tabari. Oh, oh Francois. My son. Pardon? Yes? Uh, uh, could you direct my friend and me to the Fur Cone Tavern? Well, whom do you seek at the Fur Cone Tavern? We've heard much of this fellow, Francois Villon. We want to see him. Oh, well, I, I don't blame you. Come, I will escort you. Tell me, is Villon as handsome as they'll have you believe? Even more handsome. A reckless rogue, though. Reckless, fearless, and fascinating. And also something of a thief, I understand. The cleverest thief in Paris. Ah, here we are. The Fur Cone Tavern, gentlemen. Well, my gutter gentility, my ragged lambs, how goes the night? Profitably? Francois. Francois. Oh, we thought you were never coming. Francois? 
You are Villon. But of course, didn't you guess? No, I must confess, I did not. In Paris, monsieur, it is well to keep one's wits about one. You never know whether the shadows conceal a thief or a king. I've saved the corner table for you, Francois. Oh, thank you, Huguette. Gentlemen, this is without a doubt the loveliest barmaid in Paris, the fairest skin, the bluest eyes, the most divine. <clears throat> uh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Well, uh, Vion, will you sit down with us and drink to Burgundy's downfall? I will, but I hope I'm not drinking to a lost cause. The Burgundians are at our gates now, and Louis' throne is swaying like a rocking chair. Are you an admirer of the king, Vion? I admire him as much as anyone can admire an nincompoop. Nincompoop? No doubt you could do better than the king if you were in his place. Oh, if I were king, the Burgundians would be driven from the city before another dawn. Indeed. Francois, Francois, may I have a word with you? Of course, Tabari. Excuse me, gentlemen, I'll return in a moment. Uh, no hurry. Francois, she is here. She is here? Here? Here. I, I gave her your poem and she made me bring her back with me. Uh, she's in the outer room. Francois, Francois, Francois. <laughs> You are Villon. I am your servant, mademoiselle. You wrote me this. If I were king, I love. If I were king, what tributary nations I would bring to kneel before your scepter. And to swear allegiance to your lips, your eyes, and your hair. Beneath your feet, what treasures would I fling? If I were king, if I were king. Why did you write those words to me? Why? Because I have loved you since the first hour you and I walked to your carriage together. You and I? Why, I've never seen you before in my life. I know, but I've seen you. Each night I have watched for you to come to the Cathedral of Notre Dame. And when you have left, I've walked along beside you in the shadows. You walked beside me? You had no right. I am a thief. Whatever I want, I steal. Even moments, my lady. How great is your love? Oh, I would live for you. I would die for you. Would you kill a man for me? A man? I'd kill a thousand men. Thank you. One will be quite sufficient. Who is he? Thibaut d'Arsigny. The Grand Marshal of France? Yes. I learned today that he plans to betray the king, and I and my lands are to be his prize when he opens the gates to Paris to the Duke of Burgundy. Oh. What can I do? Thibaut comes here tonight to meet one of your men who is in the pay of Burgundy. And if I kill him? My undying gratitude will be yours, as well as any price you ask. Then I'll have that rose you wear in your hair, my lady. In the court? That means a promise of love. What does it mean in the thieves' market? The same as it does in the court, my lady. Will you give me the rose?
Could you love a thief named Francois Villon? I could love an honest man named Francois Villon. I'll open that door. If the Grand Marshal is in the tavern, point him out to me. There he is in the long black cape leaning against the wall. Oh, he's talking to René. Now I know which one of my men would sell us out to Burgundy. Farewell. Until we meet again. Good night, my lady. Draw your sword, Grand Marshal. We'll have no traitors to the king in the fur cone tavern. I don't fight with thieves, Monsieur Villon. And what concern is it to you who is king of France? I am a Frenchman, Monsieur Traitor. And I'll kill any man who attempts to betray Paris. Draw your sword or I'll run you through as you are. You'll hang for this, Villon. Stop! Stop! I demand that you stop this brawling in the name of the king! The king! Tristan, what are you doing here? Take that devil Villon out and hang him. No. Villon is my affair. Your majesty. Thibault, oh. your career and your life are at an end. As for you, Villon... Your majesty... You are Louis, the King of France? I am that nincompoop. Didn't you guess? No, I must confess I did not. You never know whether the shadows conceal a thief or a king. Wise words, Master Vagabond. I wish I choked on them. Yeah. So you think you would make a better king than I do you? Uh, that I still stand by, Your Majesty. Is there one heart in all of France that you hold as I hold my rabble in this very tavern? Tristan, am I out just stationed outside as I ordered? Yes, Your Majesty. Then tell them to arrest Thibault and Villon and throw them both in irons. I paid a high price for a rose tonight. Ah, uh, but it was worth any price. Before we hear the second act of The Vagabond King, brought to you by the American Railroads, let me call your attention to something that President Harry S. Truman said about railroads last May. President Truman's statement was particularly timely because it isn't often that we stop to think what these railroads mean to the nation and to each one of us who lives in America. In connection with the Chicago Railroad Fair last summer, the president said, and I quote, In time of peace... Our railroads supported the expansion of the country and the development of its resources as no other agency could have done. In wartime, especially during World War II, their contribution to national security and defense was of incalculable value. All this was possible because of the great degree of efficiency developed in the operation of the railroad lines. End of quotation. In this brief statement, the president packed much of the meaning of railroads to the United States, and to each one of its citizens. And now, back to The Vagabond King, starring Dorothy Kirsten, Lucille Norman, Francis X. Bushman, and your host, Gordon McRae. Good day, Your Majesty. <laughs> well, Villon, welcome to the court. I must say you improved since last night. Yes, last night. I was tampered with while I slept. Somebody bathed me. <laughs> now, that's a pretty shabby trick, don't you think? I ordered it done. I don't object to a man being a thief. So long as one is in my presence, I don't smell a rat. <laughs> I ordered you drugged last night. And while you were unconscious, I had my men dress you in the finest clothes available and <laughs> shave off your beard. My beard? Yeah. Sire, I've been growing that beard for months. Well, take a look at yourself in that mirror. Hmm. Ah. 
Well, <laughs> I'm even more handsome than I realized. Huh? I must remember to have my face washed again sometime. Yes, I must. You know, you have awakened this... You have awakened this morning to find yourself the new Grand Marshal of France. No. Yes. You said that you would make a better king than I, and as Grand Marshal, you shall act as king for 24 hours, until tomorrow morning, to be exact. Tomorrow morning? Yeah. What happens tomorrow morning? Why, then you'll be hanged, naturally. <laughs> I've already ordered a very handsome gallows erected in the Place du Greve. On second thought, Your Majesty, perhaps you are a better king. Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. You have one slim chance of survival. I'm told that you've shown a great interest in my kinswoman, Lady Catherine de Vaucelle. If you can win the love of that lady, you shall escape the gallows and marry her. In 24 hours? Yeah. Your Majesty, the Lady Catherine de Vaucelle is outside requesting an audience with the new Grand Marshal. Uh, have a come in, Tristan. She won't recognize you now that you've bathed. And dress decently, Vion. 24 hours. Yeah. Use all your charms you like to brag about, Master Vion. The cards are down. Play your hand. Come, Tristan. Ah, good morning, Catherine. Go right in. The Grand Marshal will be pleased to speak with you. Thank you. Monseigneur, I am Catherine de Vaucelle. I have a favor to ask of you. Whatever it is, it is granted. You have in prison a certain Francois Villon. Yes? I beg you to spare this man's life. Well, what has he done? He tried to kill a traitor that deserved to die. I beg you, give him his freedom. All right. He is as free this moment as I am. Then my conscience is at peace. Thank you. Good day, Monsignor. Lady Catherine, there is a favor I would ask of you. Yes, Monsignor? Your company for this day. The sight of you close by, the sound of your voice. What is it I seem to remember in you? To remember in me? Your eyes, your voice, the way you speak. Lady Catherine, stay with me this day. Sit beside me, walk beside me. The day is short and our lives are not much longer. Perhaps tomorrow. Tomorrow I must leave these gates. I have an early appointment and I may not return from it. You're a strange man. I have no faith in tomorrow's, Lady Catherine. When you say not today, I would ask you then, will your beauty ever be quite so fair again? When you frown and look down, let me ask of you, can I ever love you more than today I do? Tomorrow is too far away, tomorrow is long to delay.
would it take to win you, Lady Catherine? The man I would love, follow, worship, is the man oh, who... Monsignor, a word with you, if you please. Later, Tristan, later. Thank you for your audience, Monsignor. Good day. Now, what did you do that for, you miserable fly in my ointment? His Majesty asked me to advise you that the other prisoners from the Fur Colton Tavern that were arrested last night have been brought here. Others beside myself were arrested? His Majesty wants you to pass judgment on them. Be sure they won't recognize you in those clothes. Without your ear. Well, send them in. Send them in. The Grand Marshal's waiting for you. Go in. Oh, Your Grace, Your Excellency, Your Most Royal Excellent Grace, I didn't do it. Didn't do what? You get, isn't his voice familiar? I swear I... I, I... Didn't do what, Rogue? I didn't do anything. Then you die. With France PCs, we have no room for fat clowns who have done nothing. (laughs) Oh, mercy, sire, mercy. Down on your knees when you address me, villain. What? He said down on your knees, Tabari. Down on my knees without a cushion? Oh, please, Tabari. Neil will be executed. Not you, mademoiselle. Only the fat cabbage here. Oh, monsieur, please. What has happened to Francois Villon? Oh, why do you ask after Villon? I'm afraid I love him. Love Villon? Why? No, never mind. It is a foolish question. Naturally, you would love him. You are a woman. I should know better than to love him. He has never made a girl happy, and probably no girl has ever made him happy. He believes in nothing. He laughs at everything. He has changed recently. No. Men like Vion never change. I can tell you his whole philosophy of love. Listen to me. Hearts may flower for an hour, though they die in a day. Lips may kiss, bind with peace, ere they learn to be trained. Night, love, smile, 
I suppose every woman that has ever seen Viol must have fallen in love with him. I am irresistible, there's no doubt about it. Aha! Why, you lying gutter snipe! You, you, you dog born of a mule! You, you, you splinter in the seat of humanity! <laughs> <laughs> now, Tabari, where's your sense of humor? Tabari! will be executed. Down on your knees, you said. <laughs> and you would have made me go down without a shred of pity. It couldn't be, Francois. It could be, and it is. Well, what are you doing here? I am the temporary Grand Marshal, and I have need of you both. Tabari, today the new Grand Marshal will issue orders that the tax is to be removed from the Rhine, that the prison doors are to be opened, and that there is to be food for everyone. Francois, you can do this? Yes, I can do it today. And today a new Paris will be born on the streets. A live Paris, a fighting Paris. You get. Go to the thieves' market. Tell my people to spread the word that Vion is now Grand Marshal of France and that he asks them, as his friends, to come here to the palace and march with him to defeat the Duke of Burgundy. I will go at once, Francois. And as for you, my fat turnip, <laughs> first of all, you are to take a bath immediately. Oh, of course. I Take a bath! <laughs> Oh, Francois, I'd rather die. Well, perhaps I can arrange that, too. Oh, no, no, no. But, but, Francois, a bath will ruin me. It will take me years to get this dirty again. Never mind, never mind. Oh, couldn't it wait till tomorrow? My stomach's been blinky all morning. Who cares about your stomach? I do. I've been attached to it for a long time. <laughs> and Tabari, when you have had your bath, I want you to see that word gets to the followers of the Duke of Burgundy that tonight... There will be feasting and merrymaking in the streets and in the court. Mm. That tonight is a royal opportunity for him to capture Paris. Well, Monsignor Grand Marshal, what is the reason for all the roistering in the streets of Paris tonight? Those are my men, Your Majesty, who have their daggers poised and ready waiting for the Duke of Burgundy to enter the gates. Huh. And what of the Lady Catherine? Are you speaking of me, Your Majesty? Yes, my lady. His Highness is well aware of my love for you. You speak so quickly of love, Monseigneur. You have known me only one day. One day? Catherine, look at me. Look closely. Do you see nothing to remind you? Remind me? Yes, I see much to remind me of a man I have dreamed of meeting, of truth, of honor, of manhood. Catherine, look more closely. Think of a black knight, a tavern. A song that you used to sing, and a rogue who dreamed of answering it. Someday, when the winter is over, someday, in the flush of the spring. Francois Villon, your servant, my lady. Oh, no. Oh. Yes, Catherine, you are looking at Francois Villon, the Grand Marshal of France. Your Majesty, is this true? It is indeed. A pretty jest, isn't it? <laughs> Why did you do this? Yeah, he loves you. I believe even a thief is entitled to his day in court, his hour of being a king among men and among women. A thief? A contemptible, despicable, degraded wretch of a thief. Now, wait a minute, Catherine. You're attacking his whole profession. A thief, the dregs of humanity, the scum of the world, a thief! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll hang, Master Vion. All right. Then I'll hang, Your Majesty. But first, I'll ride and fight for France tonight. Spoken like a Grand Marshal, Vion. No, spoken like a thief, Your Majesty. Tonight, I'll fight at the crossroads. I and the beggars of the slums, the thieves out of the prisons, the women, the children. Tonight, the rabble of Paris are the hope of Paris. Ah, they'll never fight. They'll never follow you or any man. Oh, no, Your Majesty. Listen. Listen to your army. My army. Come, out on the balcony. You tomorrow for the crown of Burgundy. Friends, vagabonds, you have not failed me. Follow me and fight as you've never fought in your lives. Strike for the mothers that bore you, the wives that comfort you, the women that love you, and the children that renew you. Forward, in God's name, and the king. Onward, onward, swords against the foe. Forward, forward, the lily banners go. Sons of France around us break the chains that bound us down, down, down with burgundy.
With the thrilling last act of the Vagabond King coming up, let's think for a moment about President Truman's statement that we quoted earlier. The president hit the nail squarely on the head when he spoke of the contribution which the railroads have made to American life. What he said is true, and it is true in more ways than one. Railroads have provided, and they will continue to provide, the nation's basic transportation. That, of course, is their business, and it is their most important contribution. But it is by no means the only way in which they contribute to the life of America. Take, for example, the matter of railroad taxes. Everybody pays taxes, but in some instances, the taxes paid are earmarked to be spent for the special benefit of those who pay them. That is not true of the taxes which railroads pay. Like your own taxes, they go to help support essential public services. Just the school taxes alone paid by railroads amount to enough each year to keep one million children in school. And other railroad taxes go to help protect the health of communities, to help provide police and fire protection, to help operate public welfare institutions, to help maintain the national defense, to help in a thousand ways. Indeed, almost the only essential public service to which railroad taxes do not contribute is railroad service itself. Railroad taxes help build and maintain waterways, airports and airways, and roads and highways. But railroad taxes are not spent on railroad tracks or terminals. Those the railroads provide and maintain themselves. So in more ways than one, the railroads are helping. Yes, in more ways than one, they are hometown partners of each one of the communities they service. That's another reason why every American has a stake in having railroads which are physically strong and financially healthy. Railroads which are able to keep on meeting the needs of the nation. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Now we return to The Vagabond King, starring Dorothy Kirsten, Lucille Norman, Francis X. Bushman, and your host, Gordon McRae. Louis, Louis of France, we bring you these silks for your carpet. An hour ago, they floated over the helmets of Burgundy, and when we are dust, when the king's name is but a golden space in the Chronicles of the Ages... Our children's children shall whisper an echo of this battle. My Lord Grand Marshal, the King of France thanks you for your gift. You may promise these brave people that their sovereign uh, will remember them. And now, sire, I have only to do my last duty as Grand Marshal of France. I declare the life of Francois Villon forfeit and do pronounce on him this sentence that he be straightway hanged upon the scaffold that has been erected for this purpose. My friends, my friends, it is an old saying. There is an honor among thieves. I have made a wager and I have lost. As a man of honor, I have no choice but to pay the price I agreed upon. Sire, I claim your promise. Catherine. You claim my promise, yes. Catherine? I offer the hand that you said would save his life. Catherine, oh, Catherine, do you realize what you're saying? Yes, Francois. I'm saying that I love you. Sire, your sentence must be reversed, for I claim to marry this gentleman. Well, then, Master Vion, it would seem your life is saved. <laughs> but your life is saved, but one thing you must accept, you can no longer be the king of France. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Your Majesty, I've had enough of being king. Well, on the whole, I'm glad I didn't have to execute you. I'm sure you're the most amusing fellow in my whole kingdom. And from now on, he's going to be the most honest. And from now on, I'm going to be whatever you want me to be. Love me tonight.
Pigeon, who is the cleverest man in Paris? Oh, Francois. And who is the finest poet in France? Francois. And who is the greatest lover in the whole world? Francois. Francois Villon. Whoa, whoa there. Oh, why are you stopping the horses? Look at that house, Catherine, my darling. I'll wager there's a fortune in gold and silver plate in that cellar. Uh-uh. Who, my love, is the most honest man in all of France? Uh, Francois. Francois Villon. Get moving, horse. Get moving. This is Gordon Macklay giving a special vote of thanks to our three guest stars this evening, Dorothy Kirsten, Lucille Norman, and Francis X. Bushman, and to the other members of tonight's cast for their fine performances in our production of The Vagabond King by W.H. Post, Brian Hooker, and Rudolph Frimmel, which was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. Well, next week, our star-studded show train will arrive on the same tracks and at the very same time. On board will be Miss Frances Langford to join me in bringing you Vincent Newman's Hit the Deck with the chorus under the direction of Norman Luboff and the music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. Remember, during the coming week, as always, the American railroads will provide for you the dependable, low-cost transportation, which is so essential to the American way of living. The Vagabond King was presented by special arrangement with Pam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared on this program by arrangement with Warner Brothers. Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the Association of American Railroads. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.